If you've ever wondered about installing a pitch lock touch rail on your grand piano, and who hasn't, this video is for you. The idea is pretty simple. The key stop rail in your piano gets replaced with a custom designed one that has 88 individually adjustable springs under the rail. This is called the touch rail. These springs apply a few grams of downward pressure to each key stick, making the key easier to push down during the first part of its key travel. The touch rail arrives in a cardboard tube, which contains these items. The touch rail. This is custom made to fit your piano based on a simple template you make from your piano and send in with your order. Adjustable temporary spacers to set the touch rail height. Permanent spacers that you cut to size. Washers that go between the touch rail and the spacers. And nuts to fasten all this to the key stop rail posts on your key bed. They also include this thing to turn the nuts, but I didn't find it very useful. First, take off your existing key stop rail. I do this with the action outside the piano, but you can do it inside the piano as well. Then slide the temporary adjustable spacers onto your rail posts, followed by the washers. The spacers will compress as you adjust the touch rail downward. These adjustable temporary spacers will then let you determine the proper length of the permanent spacers later on. Next, set the rail down onto the posts. Thread the provided nuts onto the posts, making sure the nuts go down easily without binding. Push everything down and compress the temporary spacers on the rail posts, then tighten the nuts. Push down until the washers are slightly higher than the key sticks. Going this low will help make sure there is enough room for fallboard clearance, which we'll look at later. But don't go so low that the key sticks hit the washers, or it could cause clicking on some of the keys. Finally, take off the touch rail and remove the washers and the temporary spacers. Cut your permanent spacers to the same length as the temporary spacers you just removed. These permanent spacers will make it easy to reinstall the touch rail at the same height. Then put the touch rail back on. Again, carefully tightening the nuts to avoid any cross-threading. You can now put the action back in the piano. The fallboard is the lid that covers your piano keys, and the bottom edges of the fallboard must clear the touch rail as the fallboard rotates open and closed. Luckily, it clears on my piano. But then I noticed that my fallboard is no longer opening up all the way. This is because the bottom of my fallboard is pretty flat, causing it to bottom out on the top of the touch rail. Hopefully your fallboard has more room, but for me, it means I need to cut a groove into the bottom of the fallboard so it won't hit the touch rail and it can open up all the way. A word of advice. If you're married, it may not be the best idea to tell your spouse that you plan to take the fall board off the piano and cut a groove in it on the table saw in the garage. Best to do it quickly and as quietly as possible. What? Uh, yeah, I think that was a neighbor's table saw. With the action back in the piano, it's time to check the results. Using gram weights, I find the touch rail has reduced my keyboard down weight by about five to seven grams overall. Now the touch weight is around 44 grams, whereas before it was around 50. But even more important than the reduced touch weight is the static friction, and that's gone. For example, on middle C, I've completely disengaged the touch rail spring which I can do because the spring on each key is individually adjustable. 
Here, with my original 50 gram down weight, you have to bump the piano to get the key to start moving down, which you have to do on most pianos. But on D, with the touch rail engaged, there are only 44 grams on the key, yet the key starts moving on its own with no bumping needed. No longer having static friction results in a very smooth feeling action. Upweights remain in my original 24 gram range, which is still normal. It's been about two weeks since I installed the touch rail and I really like how the piano plays. I'd say it does exactly what it's advertised to do. It's completely silent and does not slow down the key return. Before the touch rail, my piano actually played pretty well because the action was properly regulated and lubricated. My down weight was in the 50 to 55 gram range, which is normal, but I still felt the action could be just a bit lighter and give me a little better dynamic control. And the touch rail has helped it do just that. The most important thing I feel that the springs on the touch rail do is break the static friction before the key starts to move and reduce the initial effects of inertia in the keys, resulting in a lighter and easier to control piano action. What I don't know yet is the longevity of the system. I suspect the springs would be the weakest link and I don't know how well the felts on the bottom of each spring will wear over time. If you have had a touch rail in your piano for a long time, I'd love to hear your feedback. Just leave them in the comments below. So good luck. And if you need more information about the Pitchlock Touch Rail, contact the Pitchlock Company. A link to their website is in the description below. Thanks for watching.